Okay, so now we need to add the bone. Uh, there's two ways we could do this. We could also uh, move the can up so that it's exactly on top like so. Okay, let's kind of do that. GZ. Okay, and then uh, let's turn on sidebar and uh, screencast. Okay, and let's take a look at it in wireframe mode. Okay, so we're going to do some bending on this, so we're going to need some geometry for this can. So right here, I'm going to go edit mode, control R, or edge loop cut. It's this tool right here. Okay, loop cut, control R, and I'm going to scroll my mouse till we kind of have that. Okay, uh, how many cuts was that? 13. Let's go with 13. Okay. So, once we have 13 right here, the can should be ready for animation. So, it has all the cuts already, okay? So, let's build the, uh, the uh, oh, uh, we need to apply, object apply, uh, all transform on this, okay? Because when we do that, it zeroes out everything here, and then it kind of positions this can as if it's, made um, at the center of the world okay so all i did is object apply and then all transform okay uh, let me click undo so you see the value before i did that so you can see here it has a rotation value actually that needs to be 90 right there okay yep 90 and uh, yeah so it has all this kind of value so when we Go to object, apply all the transform. It zeroes it out so that it's easier for us to kind of animate. So now we have a starting position. Okay, so all our rotations are zeroed out also. Uh, let me just kind of check. We have the rings. Okay, now we just need to add the armature. So let's add the armature. All right, and let me go to wireframe mode here. Go to our data, viewport, display in front. So again, exactly the same thing as uh, the Pokeball, okay? Nothing has changed. I'm gonna drag this all the way up, right here, top of the can. So we will be using the bone to animate the can. Okay, right there, go back to object mode. And what else do we need? Uh, we need a uh, an, uh, constraint for the uh, bone, maintain volume, so we, we scale it it goes X uh, and Y and Z as well, so it keeps the volume, okay? And Z axis on the maintain volume. All right, so now let's apply the, uh, the let's parent the bone, okay? So select the can, shift click the bone, control P, armature deform automatic weights, okay? So now when we uh, scale the bone along the, just the bone, okay? It should keep the volume, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna, and we can add another uh, modifier to this, which is the um, simple deform, all right? So now, but before we add that, let's now do the, uh, the animation for this one, kind of just jumping up and down, right? So let's go to our animation tab, Okay, so let me just kind of get this position right so. Uh, on this one here, I'm going to uh, lock the camera to view and just so that we could see that thing right there. Okay, over here, screencast. All right, so and then uh, let's change this to 1 to 25. So we're kind of recreating, uh, kind of like to prove the point that it's all the same when you're bouncing a ball, the, that animation technique is applied to any object, okay? So let's kind of do that. So uh, we're only animating the bone, okay? So on this one, um, we can uh, start from the top, right? So and then we can do some animation where it stops at the bottom. So right here, I'm gonna save this as a different name at this point. Coke can 
animation ready. Okay, well at least that part of the animation so that when I save this as a different name I can always go back to to this one right here. So uh, let's move this up. I'm going to press N here so we can see the value here. Press T right here so we can see the tool. Okay, so on one let's start uh, kind of bringing this up. So let's say just 8 on the value. Okay, 8 on the value moving it up. All right. Okay, and then uh, we'll keyframe it. So I'm going to right click here, insert key single keyframe. We also know that thing is going to go back to frame 25, kind of like the Pokeball. Okay, this thing's going to be on the ground at zero at frame 10. All right, so right click. And then I think we kept it on the ground. Uh, until 16 also so frame uh, 16 put zero value to the reason for that is we do want to squash it right so now if we take a look all right so it is still has that wrong bounds and what is that that's the graph editor right because if we take a look here so let's we just want to see the y-axis right here okay and uh, we want to make sure we select the key for it okay and it's this key and that key right there and all uh, just selecting them shift click drag press V as in victory then go with vector okay it flattens it here but it frees up the handle so let me press kinda all here and then press dot on the numpad to select everything so I'm just selecting that handle and pressing G Selecting that handle and pressing G. So now we have that good bounce that's going up and down. Let's add the uh, scale for it. Okay. So if we scale it like so. Okay. Y on the registration right there. Okay. Um, oh, because uh, it was on post mode, but we could have done that in object mode. Then Z is Z. Okay. Because it's Y up right now on this one. Um, I'm in post mode so if you animate in object mode then uh, you you animate the z-axis all right but for this one you can just visually see it when you move the z right there it changes the value on the y right there okay so uh, and we're just gonna keep it like that so on frame 10 uh, y right here insert single keyframe no squashing same thing with 16 no squash and then on frame 13 right here we lower that oh. there we go so yeah I have to be in object mode in order to access the maintained volume right there so let's do it on Z uh, insert single keyframe and then on 10, I have to kind of redo that, put back it to 1, because uh, it was on post mode. All right, so I just put it back to 1 right here. Insert single keyframe. Okay. And there's that. All right, so now we basically just transferred all what you've learned in... Um, in the Pokeball, but now we're using uh, Coke can. Okay. All right. So uh, let's add the bend modifier to this by applying a simple deform. Okay. And then we're going to do some uh, follow through animation. Okay. Or secondary motion. Okay. We're still 1 to 25 on the timeline. I'm going to go click this. Uh, it looks like a. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my armature because I deleted that the rents right here let's add a simple deform okay and we're going to use the uh, it has twist taper stretch okay we want to use the bend and we want to have it on the y-axis so that we can animate kind of going this way again it's possible for this to happen because we added those rings to the uh, to the can all right so just control R and uh, scroll your mouse in order to get those. 
All right, so we're going to be using uh, just a simple animation for this one. So I'm going to uh, leave the angle at zero for now. All right, so we have 1 to 25 right here, and we just want this can to kind of move left to right, okay? So in order for um, to have that motion right here, uh, we're just going to do uh, 1 to do 1 to 15 for it to slide left to right, okay? So let me grab my move tool here. Let me turn on my screencast. Okay, so uh, we just want it on X axis. Okay, so let's turn on our items right here on the X axis. So on frame one, B right here. So insert single keyframe right there on X. And then we go to frame 15. We just move it right here, maybe 10. 10 meters so we all have kind of whole numbers insert single keyframe so when we watch our animation really boring it just goes like so and it has a uh, if we look at the graph editor here it already has um, built-in slow start and then slow stop right so slow in slow out principles of animation is by default on However, now that we have the bend modifier, we can start adding secondary animation to this. Okay, so when it starts moving, we want it to starting to kind of bend like so, as if it's going to travel, right? So, so we start on frame one, no angle. So I'm just going to right click, insert keyframe, or you can also click that animation button right there. So insert keyframe zero angle so when it starts going maybe here I want to give it that bend okay maybe 45 minus 45 I mean you can you can exaggerate as you can go okay but keep in mind the more you exaggerate the more uh, secondary or follow follow animation follow through animation you have to do so around here I'm gonna start giving it a 45 so when we play it there it is. However, when it reaches 15, okay, this thing will now start to animate the other way, right? So I'm going to animate it 45 also here on 15 where it stops, okay? And then on 15 to, let's say, 19, I animate it going that way. So that's kind of like the follow through animation here. And now let's watch it. All right. Okay. So now you see the effect of keyframing it on 15. Okay. It has that kind of unnatural kind of stop for it. Okay. So if we go to 15 right here where it's value at 45, let's change that to... Uh, um actually undo that's a let's just get rid of that keyframe that we did right there so that it starts on it starts to kind of compensate on that speed because it slows down so this can't be 45 right here okay so we can start giving it let's say zero all right so from one to when did we start animating it? Can't remember now. Angle deform. I think around eight, right? Okay. There it is. Uh seven. Okay, so seven to 15 where it stops we give it zero and then the kind of overlap it goes that way and then that's four frames so we get, we're going to do diminishing effect I'm going to go three frames here and a lot less angle insert single keyframe two frames so, so it started four on the right three on here now two here A lot less angle 
and then finally 25 we go back to zero okay now let's take a look let me extend the animation to 35 now so that we could see that actually it doesn't loop right away oh I forgot to keyframe 25 23 okay 22 and then we went right away and then 25 I forgot to keyframe this to zero there we go so now it should come to a complete stop all right there we go so we just kind of gave it like this really very elastic okay and that's just simply kind of kind of swaying it all right so let's break this down using our uh, annotations here okay let me uh, go back to uh, dope sheet here so you could see where the keys are so so on frame one okay so we have frame one the movement right frame one then we went all the way to frame 15 right here okay so uh, let's see you got one 15 right so 1 and 15 this is all x-axis right X location that's all it did and then we started with the angle see on frame one we keyframed it so on frame one so this is the uh, bend okay this is bend all right so we have one one at zero degree okay then we went to seven we have uh, minus 45 and then we stop at 15 at zero degree okay and then from there on we just went um, 15 to 19 and then swing it the other way oops not as much angle for two frames three uh, three frames and then two frames until no bend hence all this key so when we went to 15 the bend stops so 15 to 19 we bend it that way 19 to 22 one frame less we bend it that way but a lot less angle not as angled on 22 22 to 24 two frames move it there a little bit then just one frame went back so if you're looking at it just on let's say just the animation um, it'll be a good one maybe modeling right here let me turn off okay So it has that kind of jiggle look to it okay so you can practice with this and then just kind of uh, we're adding to our 3d animation principles okay and let me go here kind of show you that one go to animation All right. 